Hey friends, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this entire world of healing trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. Today I have a story for you that's going to cover all of these bases. Um, I'm talking with one of my students from my self-study course, the 21 Day Nervous System Tune-Up. Her name is Elizabeth, she lives in Sweden. And in the summer, just this past summer, 2021 in July, I did a video, and I'll post this one below, where I read a letter that she had written for me and my team describing all the healing, the changes that were was occurring in her body as a result of starting this nervous system work through my programs, through my resources. And today you will meet her and um, we go through some of her journey, what she learned, her process, the one thing that really stood out for me um, was that in addition to doing the course and being very diligent at watching my videos and taking in my free resources, she has really taken it upon herself to make this her self-study. She is aiming to master and learn as much as she can around the nervous system from a practical level with me, but also a theoretical uh, level. Um, so I'm really excited to share this with you. And if anything, she is a testament to the fact that our systems are very, very A, complex, but also B, have the capacity to heal beyond measure. And so have a listen, have a watch. And like I said, I'll post any relevant links below along with the video that I did in the summer of 2021, reading out her full letter. Enjoy. Oh, and one more thing. At the end of our talk, um, after we finished recording, she was open to come back and do another chat with me online to answer questions, to share more of her story. We figured we'd keep it to kind of part one today. So if you have a question for her, put it in the comments below. I will grab them, I'll collate them, and then we'll do another another chat with her and I'll get her to answer the questions. Um, thank you so much for being here, learning this work and just believing in a different way of moving forward with our health, our, our healing and doing so at this nervous system and somatic level. I shared your story in another video, maybe a month or two ago, it was in the summer of 2021. So you know, someone might be watching this in 10 years or they might watch it when it comes live. Um, and I'll post that near here so people can hear me share a bit of your story, healing your nervous system um, with the program that I've created, the 21 day nervous system tune up. Um, but I want to just get your story. Um, and you gave me some notes, which are really help helpful. So we'll go through them. But um, tell me what started your path on knowing that you needed to heal your nervous system. And I'll even go by your notes. So when did your burnout start? Um, and also, where do you live? Let people know where you are right now. Uh, I live in Sweden with my husband. I started uh, burning out around December 2014. And about after six months of really like intense fight or flight mode, uh, I was feeling this kind of shift in my body. So I was thinking, oh, oh my God, it's finally over. But now I was just moving in both fight or flight and freeze. So it was yes on, breaks on. Uh, after that, I just got sicker and sicker and I got this list of symptoms and I got a bunch of diagnoses. And at the same time, the doctors couldn't find anything. Everything looks fine, they said. Mm. I even got the you're too young to be in so much pain. But, yeah. May I ask how old you are? 34. So you're 34 now. So this when you had... 28, I think, when it started. Yeah. So you were really young. Mm. Rough. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, you were young. You were young. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're still young. Um, so you, you had these symptoms, you were burnt out. Yep. Um, there was nothing medically wrong with your system. No. And this is a really common thing that I hear from my students and clients 
-hmm. and they're kind of um, a mystery. We could say a medical mystery. Did you have any idea when you had all these diagnoses, and I'd like to hear what they diagnosed you with back then, did you understand the nervous system, stored stress? Did you understand any of that back then? I had and... no idea. And that is strange because uh, in Sweden, um, we have this uh, national health care guide for free. It's a free healthcare advice information, both online and by phone. So we always call that number instead of hospitals and clinics. Uh, even before sometimes 911, we call that number. And uh, now that I know about this, I went and checked. And all, all of this is on there. This is universal language. It's, it's so strange because this is common knowledge. Why, why hasn't anybody told me this before? It's so strange. So let me just make sure I got that. So that, that universal healthcare, uh, is it a, a website, a, a organization? Yeah. They, you, did you go there now and see that all this information was there? Yep. But you, oh, and, um, wow. Yeah. So I haven't, why haven't they t t told me this before? So yeah, it's strange. That is strange. But, yeah, okay, my diagnosis were um, fibromyalgia, um, symptoms of EDS, um, PMDS, heavy menstrual cramps, uh, POTS, and yeah, and some more. So, Can you, mm -hmm. so let me, I'll just repeat them. So fibromyalgia, EDS, can you tell me what that is, um, what mm -hmm. it stands for? Because it's a long word. Yeah. Couple it's words. A, it's a Elish Thaumdos syndrome. Yeah. And what are the symptoms? Like, what were you experiencing? Mm, I have it from both my mom's side and my dad's side. So I'm very. My joints are very. What do you call them? Over. Loose. Yeah. Oh, hypermobile. Yeah, hypermobile. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, the ligaments in. Uh, with the tissues, it gets very stretched and uh, overworked easily. So yeah, it's it's a lot of pain. Yeah. And okay, and the EDS, we'll just use that because it's easier to say. Mm -hmm. Did you have the symptoms before, like when you were younger, or did it? Is this something that just? Ha it's almost like overnight the system became ho hypermobile. I've always been hypermobile, but I haven't always had the pain. Okay, the pain I understand. With the burnout. And I want to go back. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the EDS in a moment, but just to make sure I got the other pieces. And we did. I did talk about this in the other video, but um, POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a long word again. But it's basically the blood pressure doesn't know how to work in the body and the heart goes really fast. Um, and then the other thing you said was really, really um, troubled menstrual cycles. Yeah. Like, was it just lots of pain? It was a lot of pain. And the doctors even told me it was sort of pain, like childbirth pain. Oh, uh, childbirth pain. Yeah. And they say even... He said, oh, it's common. I'm like, yeah, but just because it's common doesn't mean we have to normalize it. Yeah. I, I'm, we are the same frequency on that, I agree. Just because mm. it's common doesn't mean that it's necessarily what it should be like. Mm. Okay, so you have these symptoms, you get these diagnoses. Were you given any instruction on how to or what to do? Because this was, I think you said, 2014? Yeah. What happened? Um, no, nothing. Just rest. No. Re nothing. No. Um, and were you working at the time? Were you able to work? Were you able or were you just not able to at all? Yeah, I was working full time. Um, but when I got home, I got to bed and I was 
staying in bed like until I have to work again. Except for when I was uh, eating dinner and I did that uh, in the, on the couch. Just all you could do is rest. Yep. So then what led you to find my work, the nervous system, do you remember? Yeah, it was um, a year ago. Uh, well, actually it was 18 months ago because um, uh, after my burnout, um, five years later, the pandemic and the lockdowns happened. So I went from working full time to part time. Mm -hmm. And then I felt this shift in my body. So I was, I was uh, thinking, oh, okay, it was just a stress. Uh, but after a few months, it wasn't getting any better. It just stayed the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I still had the chronic pain. So July last year, uh, after six months of uh, six years of pain, uh, I decided I did not want to live like this anymore. I was in my thirties. I, yeah. So I was uh, just about to go on summer vacation. So I decided to take August off, and then in September to start to figuring out what was going on. So just, that's so important. So your story is really remarkable and we're gonna go through some of the things that you learned in, in finding me in the work. But um, you know that I've studied with the somatic experiencing the work of Peter Levine and you may have heard me say this in past videos, but I'm gonna share it for everyone listening. What you said a second ago, you, you decided, you know, 18 months ago or, or so, I don't want to live like this. Like, it, it's almost like you said to the universe, and this is my interpretation, we have to figure out what's going on and I have to heal. And you're nodding, so you agree with me. And what Peter has found, and I know this and my colleagues know this, is when someone heals and really heals, um, and of course I'm generalizing to a degree, um, but in this, in this case with chronic illness and, and such, being able to come out of the victim role and have empowerment and, and we could even say just sort of a hell no, like, no, this isn't my life. I have to figure it out. I believe in energy and the universe and alignment, and I have a feeling you do too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um, and it just sort of sends out a frequency to the, to the world and things will find us or we'll find the thing that we need to find, but we have to be relentless with that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so tell me how you found the work. Like what happened? Was there like a... It started, uh, I came across Peter Lewin's work and mm -hmm. I bought and read uh, Waking the Tiger. And, oh, okay, that book just slapped me right in the face because it was <sighs> it was too real. Uh, Dr. Levin is obviously a genius and I'm so grateful for his work, but I was more in a practical approach. So when I finish the book, I panic and I'm, what the hell am I going to do now? Oh, so, so you read, I see. You read the theory and the stories, but you didn't know what to do afterwards. Yeah, I yeah. See. Okay. I had this thing, like, okay, when I'm done with this book, I'm going to be healed. But of course, it's not going to happen like that. But I had that in my mind, so yeah. But after, after I finished the book, um, I continued my search, and now that I knew what I was looking for, I found a ton. You know, there are a lot of people doing this work, and that's amazing. But the thing is, most people use the, the scare tactic. So they tell you, this is what's happening, but the only thing uh, that is going to make it all better if you buy this. Uh, and I get it, why should they work for free? But I'm not going to buy a car without test driving it. Mm -hmm. So then I found your work. Uh, and with all the introduction videos and the free resources on your site and your blog with hundreds of posts and then your YouTube channel, I just go right in with the work. So you just became like a, a, a nerd, do you know, do you have the word nerd in Swedish? Yeah, yeah, yeah like nerd. 
Yeah. He became a nerd of all the nervous system stuff. Oh, and, oh, oh. and, and so what occurred in, after that? I know that you ended up purchasing and going into the course. What was that like when you started to do some of the practical experiences and exercises? Yeah, I, I started out, um, I started off with all the free resources mm -hmm. and then when I, when I had like a layout of it and I understood everything, uh, I felt like I had to take it up a level. So my options were, I could take a couple of years doing my own research or I could just buy yourself study course because you have already done the work. So yeah, I did. I. Uh, uh, I did the self-study course, and every time that I felt like uh, something new, or like uh, if I felt something new or experienced something difficult that I had questions about, I just mm -hmm. went to your YouTube channel and just uh, yeah search. And the thing is. Every time, like 99%, I found the answer. So I, I used all your free resources, like a backup, or like a, instead of going to a practitioner to help me, I was uh, having your free resources. Yeah. Well, so you're, a, you're a very dedicated student. And I think <laughs> that's a great reminder for everyone listening is that there are lots of resources and Googling the word that you're interested in. And then of course my, my name will get you a lot of things. So, um, very well done with mm -hmm. that. Um, so how did you start to feel the, the, the healing in your system, the shifts in your symptoms? Was there something that happened where you were, were almost not sure if it was real or, or what were, what was it like over that? Cause it's been about 12 months. Um, yeah. Because you started the, was it in October of 2020, roughly? I started your work in uh, October, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, 2020. Yeah, 2020, a year ago. Yeah. The more I uh, understood what was happening in my body, the more I could just, not relax, but I just have my system doing what it should be doing without uh, getting scared. And the strangest thing is, the better I felt, the less pain I felt, but at the same time, the more I felt, so the better I felt, the worse I felt. It's so strange, <laughs> to, but you understand what I mean, right? I understand. Yep. But it so, was... Keep, no, yeah. please keep going. Yeah, but it was a... Uh, I knew what was going on, so I knew it was good pain, and it, it was time that I, I was just almost screaming in pain, and my husband, husband like, oh my god, I'm going to call an ambulance, and I'm like, no, 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 it's supposed to be like this, ah. <laughs> it was so strange, just letting the system do what it should be doing at first. Yeah, well, and... That's why, um, as you said, the education, and you did a lot of education before you started the practices, yeah. you, your higher brain was able to help your body experience the trapped pieces, the trapped pain, the fight, flight, freeze that just needed to come up and out. Um, and it's quite common that it feels, I get exactly what you mean, it might feel worse but that means it's getting better. Um, and I'll share even to this day, um, uh, I've been healing, I heal my body. I'm always working on my body. Um, and I'll just share this with you, even though I'm sharing it with everyone listening. Uh, when I was really little, I broke my arms many times, um, skating, ice skating, like jumps and falling. And, and then about 10 years ago, I re-injured one of my wrists and shoulders. And so I've been mm -hmm. working on those shock traumas and I kind of feel like I came over a hump just this week, getting into my shoulders, old pains and shocks. But I woke up a couple nights ago with my arms just numb. Like I, I couldn't mm -hmm. feel them. 
I could feel them, but they were tingly and my heart started to pound and it was, it was fear. I don't remember having these accidents when I was, you know, 10 and eight and five, but the memory was in there. And so I just sat with it. Part of me felt the fear. I'm like, no, 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 (laughs) this is your work. Just be, even I have to remind myself. So I'm saying that to people like, because our survival instincts go to worry, we still have to use our higher brain to say, no, 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 no. Just like with your husband, don't call the ambulance. Um, But what came into it, Elizabeth, was deep, deep um, tears, crying to the point where my my mouth was, and I can't replicate it, was chattering like uh, Mm -hmm. that. And I just went with it and I was with it and I moved it through. And then I went back to sleep <laughs> and last night, no, no numbness. No. So it was interesting how having that education and I share that with you and, and everyone here, just to say that how we have these traumas come up are, are one, they, we don't know when they're going to happen. They, they can come whenever. And then two, to really trust that the body is bringing something up and out that's healing. And then if you have a husband or a partner and you do, and I do, you have to educate them to say, I'm fine, or just be with me, but please don't freak out. I'm going to freak out and you just have to stand there and, and support me. Anyway, I wanted to share that just for context for others, just to understand that a little bit more if they're new. Um, what were some of the shifts and changes that started to really shift over last year? Uh, well, the biggest change is uh, I'm pain-free today, and by the time I finished the self-study course, I was uh, my chronic pain was all gone. Uh, before this, all I can feel was from the neck down was just like this numbed pain, you know, like a paper cut when it's yeah. constantly and yeah. yeah, yeah, that was my whole body. Whole body. So before this, my baseline pain level my parasympathetic home and rest pain level was maybe around five so on a scale of zero to ten and then add like work and stress and overworking my body and my period and so on so the pain level was raised maybe six seven eight nine but my baseline home and rest pain level today is zero so my pain, pain level goes as high as maybe three or four on a regular work week. Mm-hmm. So my highest pain today is lower than my lowest pain before, right? Yeah. Makes sense. That's strange. Yeah. So that's, that's the biggest change. But another is my mental shift. I'm not in this hyper vigilance anymore. And I can see mm-hmm. it like when I'm driving uh, or when I'm going somewhere and I, and I have to plan and pack and stuff, and uh, my arachnophobia is uh, it's not gone, <laughs> but it's so much better. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Like, um, yeah. And, and for and for those that don't know, that's fear of spiders. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I I've learned to make friends with the spiders also, but they're they're. It's a survi- It's a very deep unconscious survival yeah. piece in our body because some of them are, I don't think where you live, any of them are poisonous. None of them are poisonous mm-hmm. here. No. Um, but yeah, there's an imprint that says caution. <laughs> that might be a danger. Yeah. But, but now, that's... Now, now it's not uh, tears and now it's like, ugh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get it. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, because sometimes people um, express that they're worried that they won't be able to keep up with the course, and I don't know how you went through it, but I always say you have to go at your own pace. You don't have to do one lesson every day. How did you proceed through the 21-day tune-up course? Did you take your time? How did you experience that part of it? Yeah, I took my time. This is a three-week course. I did it in four weeks. It's um, pretty fast, uh, but um, I I really like took advantage of it. 
so I was uh, watching like um, one lecture, but I was always watching a lecture twice because the second time I wrote and I yeah I took notes and yeah so I really took in my time with every time. Beautiful. And I don't want to assume, but my assumption is that you repeated the practical exercises. You didn't just do it once because I know mm -hmm. sometimes a mistake and we, while we say this to everyone, sometimes they don't really believe it, but it's important to keep repeating the lessons, mm -hmm. practicing the way you would exercise. For example, you can't just yeah. do it once. Yeah, I did the practice uh, like regularly. And would you say that um, now a lot of the practices, are you finding you can naturally do some of them without being guided through my voice and my lessons? Like, are you naturally orienting and yeah. how's yeah. that? Yeah. It's stuck in my brain. So this is, <laughs> yeah, Good. it's going Good. to be there for the rest of my life. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Well, when, when we started, to, uh, when we got on the, the call before we pressed record, you had said to me, uh, yeah, I know you don't like to be called a healer, Irene, but you are, and I still might argue that. <laughs> but yeah. because I'm wanting you to learn how to learn how to do the work yourself, yeah. and it might be that for the first 12 months, or for some people, a couple of years, they have to do more interaction with my lessons. But eventually, you like writing or learning how to read. Eventually, you can just do it, but you might need that instruction for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about the EDS, the, the, the Ehlers-Danlos -Dan syndrome, I think, mm -hmm. that we touched on. And you wrote a piece for me about this because I know when I released your video or the video I made where I spoke and wrote, read your letter about how you healed something that was considered untreatable, there were some people, and I don't know if you saw the comments, but said, well, this is a genetic disorder. There's no way that this can be cured. This is impossible. This must be fake. And A, you're not fake. You're real. <laughs> right? This is real healing that happened. Um, and so I could read this, what you wrote, or do you want to just speak to me how you experienced being diagnosed with something that was been told this is untreatable, this is just genetic, and then actually kind of disproving that. Yeah. I don't say this work cures EDS, but I am symptom and pain free today. Uh, I was uh, a couple of years ago, I went to see a homeopathic holistic practitioner, mm -hmm. uh, and I was telling her about my pain and all the diagnosis I got. And she said, oh, so you get diagnosis. You know, you, you can just give them back, you know, if you don't want them. And I was so angry and hurt. And I was like, how dare she say something so stupid when I have these serious conditions? So, but okay, now I get it. But so I get why people get offended and triggered because this is, it's their truth. And it's their, their world. Yeah, I get it. You get it. No, and that's a very that's a very empathetic way to to um, address it because it is hard when more than one person has say given you a diagnosis and and sometimes some things are accurate like someone that has a blood disorder from birth, for example, or a genetic mutation. There are some things like Down syndrome that. From what I know, those are not changeable. So there are those things, um, and I want to acknowledge those actual genetic um, alterations and, and such. And then there's sort of these others that um, are a bit more mysterious with this. Um, any other thoughts on just the, the healing and the shifts in your system at that kind of... Would you say that you've changed your genetics? I know you you understand epigenetics like what's your thought on what's gone on in your, your nervous system and how you've shifted your own biology well some people say that uh, 
EDS is reversible, but I don't want to take a stand on that. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but all I know is, yeah, okay, my body is not perfect. I still have some uh, problems uh, if I'm overworking uh, and stuff. I'm, I'm still a human, <laughs> I'm not a robot. But now I know how and what and how it's all connected. And I get this flashback from when I was young and uh, teen. Uh, the pain I had then, I know now that it's not, it was not from the EDS. It was, uh, yeah, it was uh, something else. It, it was uh, the problems I have now. So don't, I don't, don't assume anything about your body. No. Yeah. That's really good wisdom to not assume. Um, one thing I will ask, and I know that um, there might be some folks asking, oh, wow, so you were diagnosed with fibromyalgia and EDS and POTS, and, um, and there's a bit strong connection between these chronic illnesses and early trauma and abuse and all this. Um, but my sense is, or, and I don't want to go into personal details um, to respect your, your history, but from what I know, you were raised in a fairly healthy home life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess my question would be, would you say that all these pieces were more just sort of society driven, just the stress of the world, the stress of work, um, just being disconnected from the body, not feeling the body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This was uh, my system just shutting down from the burnout. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. All of our hard working. Would you say that you were type A when you were younger? Did you do lots and push, push, push? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we were good little soldiers, I think, you and I, from what I, I think we might have some similarities there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anything else um, that you would like to share with people, Elizabeth, around just this journey and the healing and, and uh, your discoveries? Yeah, uh, about this uh, not to assume things anymore. For example, I have, uh, before this, I had major problem with dissociation and that's where I got the POTS syndrome, uh, symptoms and the POTS uh, diagnose. But I know now it wasn't the POTS, it, it was uh, the stress and the dysregulation. Uh, another example is six months ago I went to a practitioner, uh, he examined me and I started to scream or react. Uh, and I said, oh, I forgot to tell you, never mind my hip joints, because these are my trigger points. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is just inflammation. Just take this uh, anti-inflammatory and then try icing it. Uh, I did, and after five weeks, it was gone. My trigger points from several years ago was gone. So, yeah, stop assuming things about your body. Yeah. Interesting. So you had some, was it pain in your hip joints? Yeah, massive pain. Yep. Uh huh. And so it, it shifted through, was it through the, the treatment that he gave you or was it just through another means? Was it through just being with that? That's what I didn't catch in your, when you mentioned that. Uh, I think it was the anti-inflammatory I got uh, and then icing it because I was always uh, told that if you have sore muscles, you should it warm, mm. warm pads, and that just made it worse. So I have been warming up my hips for seven years. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> but now I was icing it, and it was, it was gone. Yeah. And are you having to continue to ice them, or not anymore? No, no. no. After five weeks, it was gone. Interesting. Yeah. That's really. Thank you for sharing that because that's. That's an interesting one for me and I'll tell you why I want to sh just because I have a thought with that is sometimes we do need to see a practitioner I don't know if it was a doctor or someone but and and they might give us something that's very valuable 
and it might be just that we use it for or that treatment or that remedy or protocol for a little bit of time and it can actually change what is happening at a very core level such that you don't have to continue to do it um, and the body kind of takes it in and it learns how to not be inflamed by doing that protocol for just a little bit of time. Am I making sense mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like if someone has a lung infection, they might take some antibiotics um, and then it clears up, but they're not continually taking them forever. It's just to help the system for a little bit of time. Yeah. Anything else that... Uh, that you'd like to share with everyone, with the world? I don't know. I think we got the, the base of it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And are you still running up hills? Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not running, running, but I am uh, taking a small, like, you know, Bursts, it? bursts of activity. Yeah. 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 And for those listening, I, I shared, when I shared your story, you had said that you had an impulse to run up a hill a little while ago. And it was the first time you said that you have, that you remember running up a hill and you had energy. And that is a really important change because our bodies need to be active. So quite the difference from working and just coming home and laying on the couch and going to sleep and just repeating it. Yeah. Very good work. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any final words that you would like to say to those listening who maybe are where you were at in 2014? Because it took you a few years to find this, um, any words for those that are struggling with the similar symptoms and diagnoses that you've had and that you're really shifted out of now? Yeah, I know some people want to know exactly what order and how I did it, but that's like uh, I would tell you how I do my morning rituals every day. Mm, it doesn't work like this because everybody's different, but uh, one thing is start with where you are. So I wasn't uh, in my study by my computer doing this work. I was lying in bed and doing this work. Uh, mm. And uh, also just commit. If you if you think you can do it, you can. If you don't think you can do it, you can't. So just commit very very good because. Um, when I did this work, uh, I felt like I was back in college because I, yeah, I was uh, like really uh, doing it and just notes on everything. And yeah, I, I think I <laughs> took this more serious in college, actually. And for those that might just be hearing this on audio, what Elizabeth just showed me was Peter Levine's book, Waking the Tiger. And it had all the colorful sticky notes at the pages as though you were studying for an exam. Yep. That's, yeah. and you know, I know not everyone might do that. And yet in some ways we are studying for an exam. It's our health exam in a strange way. So that's, um, I believe that that is a big part of your success you you did the learning you did the practices but you also went in as though you wanted to become a, a master a yeah. masterful at this yeah i really went down the rabbit hole because now i'm taking another course and i have books on attachment styles that i'm starting at from beautiful Dr. diane heller pole pool yeah 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 so uh, i'm ugh. This isn't actually what I enjoy doing, <laughs> actually. But I, I just went down the rabbit hole and now I'm stuck. I, I think, stuck. yeah. <laughs> you're stuck in a good way. You're not yeah. stuck. You're just in it and you're, you're moving through it. I think really yeah. beautifully. Yeah. 
Um, anything else? Any final words of, of inspiration or wisdom for those who might be like, oh, I just don't know, or oh, this seems like a big journey. What's your final few words? Just do it. No, <laughs> don't, don't have as it. Just uh, commit and just, yeah, commit. Do it. Don't half-ass it and commit. I think that's a beautiful place to end. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk and share, Elizabeth. Thank you.